You're listening to Little Rockers Radio, and today I'm catching up with Tom Taylor. Tom is an award-winning, number one New York Times best-selling comic book author. He's been announced as the co-creator, head writer, and executive producer of the new CGI animated kids' TV series, The Deep, which is based on his graphic novel of the same name. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. That's good. Thanks so much for joining us today. We've... um we, my, me and my son, who's eight years old, have watched a couple of episodes of The Deep, which started airing on 7-2 on the 1st of December, I believe, at 7.30 in the morning. My son just loves it. I assume he's in the correct age group to, to, to really enjoy the show. T- tell us a little bit about it. Uh, look, the deep. Um, I'm, I'm first of all, I'm really happy to hear that your son's liking it. That's um, <laughs> that is the exact right age group. Um, it's, I mean, in a way, the deep is supposed to be literally for everybody. It's it's truly all ages, and it's it's exactly what we did with the graphic novels as well. That's why I created it because I wanted to create with the graphic novels something that parents could sit down and read with their kids and mm. enjoy just as much, like a Pixar movie in a book. And that same thing's been brought over to the deep. So for anyone who hasn't watched it, The Deep is about a multi-ethnic family of underwater explorers who live in a submarine and their adventures. <laughs> and it's just kind of pure joy. Um, there's there's no violence at all. It's all peril-based action. Um, and they use their wits and other fantastic gadgets to get out of trouble. And there's pirates and sea monsters and yay. <laughs> yeah, a whole range of stuff that that especially boys um, absolutely love. Uh, now I noticed that it's obviously it's about the family that um, that explores the underworld. So they're exploring the unexplained sort of areas that we know very little about. Is that is that something that is a complete fascination with you, and that's why why you've gone down this path, or did you just think that would make a really great um, you know storybook series and then TV series? Oh, look, a bit of both. I think there's something incredible about the ocean. I mean, mm. we we just have absolutely no idea what's down there. We haven't explored it. You know, we're, we're firing off to the moon and then off to Mars and exploring space. But we have, you know, all of this life living right here. and we, we don't know what's down there at all. Things like the colossal squid, I think, were a really big... A big reason why I wrote this, um, this series in the first place, the fact that it's one of the biggest creatures on Earth and we've never seen it in its mm. natural habitat. I mean, that is just incredible to me. And so it's, so I get, this, I just guess that this is sort of this, the final frontier right here at home, this place that lies completely unexplored and unexplained. Mm. And it's, it's so close and so hard to get to. This. So, Putting a family into that environment, exploring that and exploring myths and monsters surrounding that is, you know, it's a great setting and I think people are really responding to it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great setting. And, and we can't forget, um, is it Jeffrey the Fish as well? Jeffrey he's, the he's Fish. He's a big part of that family. Of course he is. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And, and, I mean, that's that's his world that he's yeah. inviting them into, obviously. He's very generous, Jeffrey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's funny because it's, um, you know, the family, um, the, the kids are really cool and, and the parents are cool and they look at, they've got all the latest sort of gadgets and equipment, but the dad also pulls out the ancient maps to, uh, to, to help him along the way but my my son loves Jeffrey the fish so I, I imagine it's, that that's a, quite a popular character yeah look uh, there's something about Jeffrey the fish I mean he doesn't talk <laughs> and yet there's there's so much going on there <laughs> everybody responds to it I think you know we've done sort of we've done big screenings where there's been hundreds of kids invited and people sort of circle their favorite characters at the end and I can't tell you how many times Jeffrey the fish gets so cool. Gets a circle. Oh, man, he's, he's, he's got secrets, doesn't he, that fish? <laughs> <laughs> now, I... I I wanted to ask you, did you, you have, you've obviously um, had a love for comic books, and I assume this, you've had a love for comic books um, from childhood. Did, did you imagine that one day you would be um, writing comic books and, and having them transformed into TV series? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> no. I mean, no, I just, I didn't think it was possible. I mean, I... You know, I'm currently writing Wolverine for Marvel and yeah. Batman Superman for DC. And I've written, you know, Iron Man and uh, Wonder Woman. I'm writing Green Lantern at the moment as well. Wow. And, you know, these are things that I grew up just 
adoring. And I didn't, I mean, even as I was becoming a writer and becoming a playwright, I still didn't think that it was really possible from this country, um, mm. from Australia. But thanks to this thing called um, the internet. Yeah. If you haven't heard of the internet, check it out. Um, <laughs> it's, it has been possible. And then to create something like The Deep, um, that was all down to, well, it was largely down to a guy called Joe Kelly. Um, I was writing Star Wars at the time. It was my first big break in American comics. And I went over to San Diego Comic Con, which is enormous and scary and fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I had a chat to him and he's written Superman, Justice League, and Spider-Man. And he said to me, look, Tom, that's great you're writing Star Wars, but if I knew now what I knew when I was writing all of these guys back then, you know, I'd be doing my own creator-owned work. Um, and I and I insist that you go out and do that. And two years later, I was able to bring him the deep and say, here you go, and he was stunned. Um, and the reason he's a good person to listen to is because she created, with a group of three other guys, he created Ben 10. Oh, wow. And he <laughs> and they created Big Hero 6. So they, they tend to know what they're saying. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah, absolutely. And they've been fantastic supporters of the deep from day one. Yeah, oh, that's great, isn't it? Well, it's good to um, to know the right people to um, to talk to and, and get advice from. How, yeah, just just get encouragement from as well. Yeah, you know? exactly. It, it's really huge. Yep. Yeah, and how long is the process, um, or, or did the process sort of take? From you've obviously had the graphic novel, which has been out there there for a while, but once it was decided that that it was going to become a TV series, is it a very long process to sort of get it up and running and ready for launch? How long did it take? Look, I think, um, so we've had the two graphic novels, Phoebe mm. Dragons and Vanishing Island, um, which came out sort of 2011 and 2013, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I guess we've been working on the TV series since the point it was optioned by Technicolor and then um, a Stark production came on in Australia, I think probably about two and a half years. Yeah. Um, you know, I was working on it for quite a long time before it was greenlit, before anyone was seeing, you know, any wage or anything for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, but, you know, that may seem, sound like a long time, but in television world, it's unbelievably fast. Right. And to go from the comics, you know, seeing it in pages to suddenly seeing them standing and walking and talking on screen and diving off and having their own adventures is you know, it's all seemed very quick, but also incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I can imagine it's an amazing experience. Now, you mentioned to me before we started chatting, you've got um, two children who are five and ten now. Are boys or girls? Yes, uh, both boys. Okay. And what are they thinking of the fact that Dad is a comic book writer and writes Batman, Superman, Wolverine, and now has, you know, the show on, on Channel 7 too? What, what do they think of it all? I think they just assume that that's what, you know, people do. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, my son, my eldest son is now 10. He's been, you know, I wrote him in as a Jedi called Finn, um, which is actually the name of the new Jedi and the well, new character in the new Star Wars film. Oh. Um, but I wrote that in at the age of, I think he would have been two. Right. So he's been a Jedi in canon in comics since the age of two. Yeah. Um, and he's just been kind of used to this. And my youngest, I mean, he's been surrounded by it. Yeah. He just, this is just what dad does. You know, he doesn't quite understand entirely. Like, he's like, okay, so dad writes comics, I guess. You know, yeah. people, at, people at kinder ask him what dad does. And he's like, oh, he sits around at home. <laughs> um, but, you know, but they've been getting up every morning and watching the show. I haven't been getting up every morning. It's way too early for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they've gotten up every morning and watched it, which I absolutely love. And then they've been watching it on the catch-up app as well with me. Um, and, and insisting on watching it too, which is sort of the nicest compliment you can get because I wrote, I absolutely 100% wrote this show for them, mm. first and foremost, mm. something that I could share with them mm. instead of horrible, nasty, violent comic books, which I wouldn't want them reading. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the nice thing about it, isn't it? And you sort of mention it doesn't, it's a non violent um, series, which is a lot of action, but, but no violence, which is really nice. Yeah, and it was really important to us, and it's and it's quite a difficult thing to manage, and I think it was a bit of an interesting one for all of our partners around the world who are on this with us, who you know providing notes that we that we stick to that ethos because yeah. it was important to me to have you know to actually have a safe place on television, which is still and to demonstrate to people that you can still tell really exciting, wondrous stories without violence. 
Mm, mm, yeah, absolutely. And um, it's you know more people should be doing it. It's a great thing. I must say that um, your kids are very lucky because uh, what you're doing in their eyes at their age and as they continue to get older, will always be cool. Whereas my two um, <laughs> are named Jack and Grace and I obviously run Little Rockers Radio, which is a, a radio station for preschoolers. And two of the characters of mine I named after my children and already my kids are now six and eight. It's the dorkiest thing in the world. So they're like, oh, why do we have to be named after a preschool children's radio station? So at least yours will, you know, it doesn't matter what age they are, it's always going to be cool. So a big tip for uh, you there. <laughs> you'd be surprised that we do have a character we have um, a character called Smiling Finn who's named after my son and another character called Mad Madeline who's named after James Brower's daughter yeah. um, who's the artist and the art director on the show and they both like they met each other for the first time a few weeks ago and, and we hung out together as family and they were both mortified <laughs> and embarrassed they? by the fact that they were in this show that we're watching on a screen and, you know, poking each other and giving each other a hard time. So I don't think, don't worry. It, no. It's universal. You are never cool to your kids. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I just need to accept that and move on. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So if people haven't uh, checked out the deep yet, you can obviously catch up on, um, I, I think it's called Catch Up TV, or isn't it on Channel yep, 7? 7 Plus. 7, 7 Plus? plus app. Yep. Otherwise, it's on 7 to every morning uh, throughout the week at 7.30 uh, in the morning. And I believe it's on ABC3 as of next year. Is that right? That's right. Later next year, it rolls out globally and it'll be on ABC3 as well. Beautiful. And globally. So what do you, yep. where, what do you mean when you say globally? Uh, I can't tell you exactly, but I can tell you that it's on in Germany, Belgium, Finland, and then lots of places that haven't yet been announced, but it will be worldwide. Ah, beautiful. So watch this space. It'll be everywhere. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> um, so, okay, so 7 to daily at 7.30 a.m. just to recap. It's called The Deep. Keep an eye out for it in 2016 on ABC3 as well as internationally. Thanks for joining us today, Tom. It's been a really interesting conversation. Thanks a lot for having me. Really appreciate it. That was Tom Taylor, co-creator and writer of The Deep on Little Rockers Radio. How cool was that?